Hello, Billy the Artist here, back with another How to Draw video, and today we are going to be doing Hagrid, Rebus Hagrid from the Harry Potter stories. Anyway, before we go any further, please do like and subscribe, tick the bell to be notified when new How to Draw lessons and any new videos come out. But we do have in the Harry Potter playlist the most recent ones were Palatrix, Lestrange and Sirius Black and we had a lot of fun doing them again you can check them out in the playlist there's now quite a few uh, being added into the Harry Potter playlist and there are all kinds of ones so you've got Harry with the sorting hat and there's the original Harry Potter one which is still helping lots of people we have Professor Dumbledore and there's the Dark Lord in there and all kinds of stuff as well as all of the badges the Hogwarts house badges so that's the Harry Potter lot. We have recently done uh, Jungkook of BTS. Now, hopefully I will uh, be doing more of the band members of BTS. So that's good fun for in the future. And if you check out the portraits playlist, that'd be fantastic. <clears throat> because there's things like these on there. So we have Ariana Grande and Queen Barb from the Trolls. These are all fairly recent. So do check them out. But the Queen Bar from the Trolls is in the How to Draw general playlist. There is over, oh gosh, 130 odd lessons now on there and they're just adding more weekly, which is great at the moment during this time of lockdown. But I use very simple techniques and all the techniques that I use in this, I also use in this and the other portraits that you've seen. And I love showing and teaching you guys how to build your skills. So do check all of those out. That would be fantastic share them out with your friends but here we have the paper for our lesson today on drawing Hagrid now this one we are using a two centimeter grid check the link in the cards and it is also in the description and that will show you me laying down these grids now the reason I use these grids is it makes it very very simple uh, to actually build the reference up and it's a joy to be able to help you to build your technique so that you can then free draw if you check out how to draw anything part one uh, that will show you how you can draw literally anything by if you break it down into shapes it's a very very simple quick video it's only about 26 minutes long but that's the techniques that you can get to to do free drawing but this is helping you draw complex things very very simply so Again, if you look at the banner now, I've got the markings down for this actual grid structure, which is on an A4 piece of paper, I use cartridge paper. It's 210 millimetres, that's 21 centimetres across the top, 297 millimetres down the side, that's 29.7 centimetres. And I put this with a centre line, so there's a kind of little border around the edge, but I really like just having the centre line. It helps with just placing things. You can do your grid if you want, starting straight from the corner but i just do this because of the other videos like on queen bar because i put a center line down in the middle and that's where i started from so they just all tie together now the other thing is is people have asked about how do i what software what app do i use it's just image editing software now i use something called pixelmator on a mac any image editing software you can put in these lines on the reference drawing but anyway now we are going to get on with drawing Hagrid. So I am in with a trusty 2B pencil. This is a, again, a half body portrait, but we are going to start by using the grid and the center line and right up kind of at the top, I'm just putting a mark in because that's where the top of his head is. Now, we're going to put in very, very simple shapes. So if we just come down a little bit and I've got here, I've just got an oval and that's the kind of top of his hair that's coming around there. And it just goes past the 85 and the 125 line. Now here coming down the side, it's come all the way down to the 125 line. And then if we go out to 
the 185 line here we you can see we've just got a triangle and that's that shape of that hair now if we come across just above the 85 and then just to the left of the vertical 85 there I've got a little rectangle shape and that's the overall shape of his face now his eye is dead on the center line and it's kind of in the middle so I'm just drawing a little rectangle there then you've got his nose it's not quite a triangle I'm just going to draw a rectangle shape inside that square and then we want another little rectangle for his right eye bring that line in a bit on that side put another rectangle above for where his eyebrows are and then we want a rectangle there which is the top part of his moustache then we've got a little triangle there that's the side part we've got a little rectangle here and that's the little bit below his lower lip and his lips before where his beard starts now if we come down here and come across to the 65 line just draw a line across and then we can go up to the 45 Oh, I need to come down a bit that's the 125 line there so we've got the 125 line there up to the 105 that's that triangle it just needs extending that little bit more and we need to come up and across from the 85 to the 45 and then we've got a triangle coming up to join the side of his head now coming from the center line we've got a little rectangle coming down his chest and that's the kind of buttoned part of his top you've got a little circle there and then another little circle there and that's the buttons now if we come over from the 105 line We can come down to the 185 and we've got a nice diagonal and then you can see there we've got a kind of an off rectangle shape now we want to put this gigantic cuff in which you can see is a rectangle and that's just above the 205 by the 145 line again you could just go straight in drawing the outline using the reference points but teaching you where these shapes go helps you to put in everything that you actually need in the right space so you don't run out of paper so now we're going to come up here we've got above the 185 we've got a triangle that's the top part of his arm and then as we come down here there's like a little triangle there shape on the edge of his cuff his forearm got that rectangle now his hand I'm going to draw a triangle there and that's going across from his knuckles up to where his thumb is and then each of the fingers is just a rectangle his third finger and then his little finger is there from his gigantic hands and here we've got on the belt a rectangle for the strap that comes around that the actual belt goes in we've got a little square there 
then we can finish off that triangle there now here we've just got for his belt buckle it's a c-shape and then coming off up here we can draw the belt as a rectangle and then we've got some more little rectangles for the leather straps for the holster for his knife that comes down then you've got his finger that's a rectangle but I'm just going to rub that out a little bit just so as you can see the finger clearly and then we want a little triangle there which is the thumb rectangle for the back of the hand and then the second finger comes across there now his knife we've got an oval at the top and then that rectangle comes down we've got a dark rectangle shape for the top of the sheath and then that rectangle comes all the way down and coming out from his fingers we've got that long line then we've got a little line with a circle underneath with that toggle then we want this dark shape over here between the 165 and 185 line that comes down and then we've got his leg going off at the back I put these lines on as well I put all of these uh, grid lines on a lot darker than you need to I forgot to mention that in the intro but uh, you can do them a lot lighter because it's easier to rub out later now above the 285 line right at the bottom we can come across to where the holster is the sheath holster then here we've got a triangle and then just make that rectangle up at the edge now I'm just putting in a C shape that's coming down and around and then another one inside and that's the shadow of his right cuff and then here if we put a point there and you go up to the 125 to 165 line there we've got a giant triangle and that's his waistcoat similar on this side but we just need to add that up onto his waistcoat uh, come across from the 165 that's where that goes and we just want a little shape for that patch then we've got a button right on the 145 line so we just want a little oval there we've got another one below the 165 line and then finally we can just bring that line down and now we've got basic shapes down and you can see how easy it is to actually get an outline down so that you don't go off the page and that's why using the grids is very very important now I'm just going to have a piece of paper that I can rest my hand on so I don't smudge everything and we're going to start doing the detail line now we're going to start with Hagrid's face and his eyes so we've got this hairline which comes across halfway across this square so coming down from the 25 to the 45 and we can come across so we've got it from the center point the center of his forehead is here above his nose and it kind of goes out and you can see above it there's a bit of a V going up and then the top of his hair goes to the right side of his forehead and then that kicks out and goes over now the side of his forehead we're going to curve down comes down 
below the 45 line and then it just curves to about two thirds of the way down and then his cheek curves out a little bit more and then coming from just to the right of the 85 line you've got the top of his moustache following that diagonal down and that's the side of Hagrid's face giving you a good line to work to now we're going to work from this side and the reason I'm doing this and I do it different pretty much in every video a lot of the times I would start with the eyes uh, and again it's just personal choice but I can tend to start with the eyes so you've got something no pun intended to focus on whereas I did read of an artist at the weekend and they said oh don't start with the eyes you know that that's the last thing you want to start with it's like it doesn't matter where you start you can start wherever you want and I know some portrait artists who literally just block in shapes you can't really tell anything so they're not starting with the eyes so you can develop your own skills and techniques I just want to help you having fun with your drawing so here we're drawing the curve down we've got this fantastic shadow but we've got his hair we've got a highlighted piece of hair there that comes down and then the curve of the hair comes down this light part and then we've got this fantastic shadow by his cheek so coming from the 45 line we can bring you've then got this V so you kind of come out a little bit but then we've got this little sharp pointed V shape and then you've got the shadow coming down his cheek right to the center to the right of the 105 and 125 and then you want his moustache coming down to join that shadow now his nose you can see sits in the 85 to 105 lines and we've got this nice curve and it's kind of pretty much centralized in between but we need two dots either side so you got about the right space and then we can curve his nose just underneath the front of his nose bottom of that box that we drew and then imagine this side it's like a D shape little D shape so I'm drawing the curve round and it comes up and joins where the nose then curves around the front but it's a lot darker just to the right and that's the shadow that comes down from where his nostril joins the side of his cheek now his nose we've got this rectangle shape and we just drew a slight diagonal line up but you can see how that then just curves up to the center of his forehead now we've got a couple of little lines but they've got this fantastic crease line that comes down in this dark shadow right into the corner of his eye socket I'm just going to sharpen my pencil just so as I've got a sharp point now his eye that's pretty much right in the center so we've got this nice little curve if we go from the point the center point right where that crease is in the corner of his eye socket it just curves up and then curves down right to the point and then we've got this lovely curve right the way around now we've got a fantastic highlight just inside because all the lights coming from this direction coming in and so we can put the edge of his iris in we don't want a full circle 
put his pupil in just gently fill that in and then fill the edge of his iris in now we've got the inside skin going down to his tear duct and that curves underneath and above we've got his eyebrow and that just kind of curves up we've got the pre-line that little rectangle but you see how it just curves down a little bit more and then we can go up and then curve it over the top and we just got that nice shape and then you can indicate but draw in the direction of his eyebrows growing and that's all of Hagrid's eyebrow in place now we can extend the top eyelid over and we got this little crease coming off up there We've got the highlight coming off from the bottom line of his eyebrow and that curves around but then we've got the bag under his eye it's just this nice U shape and then you've got the secondary one underneath and then we can just indicate some of his laughter lines creases coming off the corner that's actually really lovely now his right eye we've got the shapes in and so we need to match it to his left eye but we've got the curve that just comes up and it's just to the right of the 85 line to the corner of his eye and you can curve it down and then you want to curve the eye coming back round and under and then again right next to the tear duct in the corner we can draw the circle for his iris, iris and his pupil and then put a circle in for the highlight I'm just darkening in his pupil and his iris and there we've got some very nice focal points for Hagrid's eyes you know it's something for you to work on with your drawing that you can actually hold on to now again we've got a crease line that comes down and then the top of his cheek which is the bottom of his lower eyelid bag on his right eye now his right eyebrow we've got a little kind of rectangle shape there and then a longer rectangle coming over the top but it's a bit shorter and then you can just draw and indicate in the direction of the eyebrow hairs actually growing now we come down into the square below his nose and we've got a fuzzy bit along that top line that's the bottom part of his moustache and we can bring those whiskers down on both sides and here we've got a triangle of shadow but then you've got this curve of the top of his beard underneath his lower lip on the end of his chin and then we just want to indicate the join between his upper and lower lip And there we have his bottom lip in as well again we're just working and using these shapes to help us as we actually construct the detail on his face now we come up to the top of his head and we can follow the outline and here you can see a C shape that's just the way that the hair is going as he's brushed it back 
whatever kind of dragon tooth claw or something that Hagrid actually uses to brush his hair in whatever way. Can't imagine him using a comb, can you? He just ruffles it and throws it over the back with his hands. Now, we follow the line down and there you've got the 145.45 and then it comes down and just follow the line down just inside that 165.65 line and it kind of wisps out a bit and then we've got more hair there but then here we've got this fantastic dark line And that's on the 185. So you come down. one eight five one zero five line. So I'm just indicating. Because that's a nice dark line. That can give us a good reference point. And then we just curve that hair off. And underneath. And then you've got the mass of hair underneath there. Now I'm just indicating the way, just some squiggles, the way that the hair is coming down. But I'm drawing it in the direction that the hair is actually going. So now we're going to get the rest of his big bushy beard in. And we can see that as this comes across under the 125, we're just indicating some of the direction of the curves. Now we've got the shadow down here. Like I said, under the 125 line, I'm just putting those little kind of tickly wispy lines. And then as we go up, and uh, if you can hear the birds in the background and chainsaws going, it's quite apt for our grid. But I've got to have my window open, otherwise it just gets too hot. And... Uh, Oh, there you go. Everyone being at home, it's quite interesting at the moment. So here we've just got a little C shape of his hair coming off down the side and then it just explodes in this triangle. And that comes over following that line down. Now again, you, you can just draw wiggly lines in. And already you can see Hagrid staring out at us, which is just great. <laughs> the giant, you know, kind of half giant man mountain that he is. Now, I'm going to detail up uh, this little button right in the centre. So I'm just going to darken that line up. And the one that's kind of underneath his beard. And then we've got the edge of the... bit of his jumper at the top where the buttons come through it's like a lapel do you call it a lapel lapels on a jacket but anyway so anyway on the lapel of his waistcoat we've got a little rectangle there with another one inside and we come down to the 165 line and then that curves across right the way down to join below the 205 line where his hand is tucked into his belt then we've got this triangle patch I just put a little rectangle in because you can see that in the well some kind of funny shape earlier uh, but the the patch just to indicate that you can see the light it's like in the highlighted part now, here we are drawing and indicating the shadows and the creases in his jacket, waistcoat jacket. Now this has got very big sewing to hold it on. But that's just done uh, the edge of his waistcoat very very quickly now again up here I'm going to bring use a piece of paper again so I don't keep smudging uh, the paper I'll keep it out of my way so that you can see as much of the drawing as possible so now from the corner here we've got this 
fantastic diagonal that comes down to between the 165 and 185 line. That's where it comes down into the shadow then where his left elbow is. So that comes down all the way. Then you've got this little curve and then another little curve there. We've got this diagonal line coming across to where this cuff is. So if you draw the big shapes and remember I'm drawing these lines very very dark you don't have to but I just draw them so that you can see them now again we've got the rectangle in but it just curves across hits the 225 line goes out goes below the 245 line a little bit and then curves across and then we can bring the cuff down to join there then we've got all of these creases. In fact, that needs to go over. Yep, that needs to go over a little bit more. So, I'm just going to rub that out. <laughs> that wasn't far enough over. Yeah, it's kind of past. That's better. The halfway point at the bottom there. So then we've got this crease. So you've got a kind of triangle there with a triangle above it. And that's the shadow of the folded crease. So we can take that up and it just crosses across there. And then we've got the next crease. And then that curves across and just down. And these are these big folds in the fabric of his top. And then this comes across, goes past the 185 line, goes out to past halfway. And then we've got some little pockets and flaps and patches on his arm. So here as you come down, you've got a little triangle. That's the highlighted part. And then you can just draw the line down, kick it out a bit, bring it back up. And that's the flap drawn really easily. Now above it, we've got a V that comes down, an inverted V. And then that goes across there. Now, here, above the 225 line, we've got the top of this next kind of pocket pouch bit. That just comes past the 185 line. And again, we've got a rectangle shape there. And then another one that kind of goes into the shadow and comes down to the 245 line. And we can just put those kind of crease lines, hem lines on. We can build them up. But they are going into the dark and we can just fill all of that in with dark when we go to shading it in. Now you've got the back of his waistcoat that comes off here, comes down, goes below the 265 line. And then you've got the kind of curve that comes across, comes past the 165 vertical. And then his leg goes down. <laughs> Now, before we do the hands, if we get the belt in properly, this will help us immensely. So to the left of the 105 centre line, inside that square between 225 and 245, we've got a very simple rectangle. And then you've got the curve of his finger. It's right on the centre line just above. But above the bottom, you've got to be inside. You know, you can. The belt has got to go inside that strap wrapping that goes around. So you can bring that to join where the top of the finger is. Now, we can bring the top of the belt over to the two thirds point, and then you've got this triangle that we put in. But just look and just see the curve of the finger, and that's the outer outer edge of his finger drawn in very simply and very quickly. Now 
we've got the buckle and it's just a C shape but there's a point and the point is just above the halfway line but halfway in and I've just put that little mark there but you can see we've got this C shape that we've drawn in so now that's just made it very simple we can follow the construction lines go up curve over and come down to join at the top of that strap then we can curve it down underneath and that's where that goes underneath now the fold of the belt as it comes through the buckle here we've got and you need to just match the kind of diagonal slightly you know it's not vertical but you can f match the shape of the belt buckle then you've got the, the kind of metal prong that's just coming through the belt and holding on to the actual buckle itself and here at the top you can curve the metal round but you've got a nice curve just underneath it folding in to join up that line on the other side of that rectangle and that's your belt and then you've got in line coming round one two holes in the belt which would be if you needed to got white more tops on and have a wider setting on your belt on Hagrid's belt so now we do the same curve around the bottom then I'm going to come over here and draw the oval at the edge of Hagrid's knife some kind of antler we would say a deer antler or something like that but it's probably some strange creature anyway just bringing the top of the belt and then we've got a curve a hoop of leather coming over and then right on the 45 vertical just below the 225 we've got a little metal circle some little hoop so I'm just drawing the circle and the line inside then the finger's going to come off then we've got another strap that comes over top of the belt then another strap that comes over before it goes into the shadow and then we've got this fold here right on the 45 vertical and then the fabric comes out curves up which is going over his tummy and then it comes up and it's right on the 45 165 line and then that kinks across little kind of kink in the center just below uh, the 145 line and then that curves up and goes underneath his beard and there you've got his tummy in very quickly and simply now the edge of his waistcoat on the right hand side again I'm just doing this I'm just following the drawing around and then we'll do the bottom bit last with his hands and it just shows you can using these techniques you can literally go anywhere so now we're going to follow the edge of his waistcoat up and that We've got that fold that goes up there we've got the button right on the 145 line then we've got the button just below the 165 line just move that over a little bit then we've got a patch below the 125 line so we've got a little rectangle with a triangle at the bottom and that's the shape of that patch and then we can bring that out go up over his shoulder inside his hair and make that join down there then we've got the edge of his right hand right hand arm from his shoulder coming down and this is about a third of the way but between the 105 and 125 line so we've got that rectangle that we put in but we can just come down a little bit curve that over it comes down out come down below the 145 line and then we've got a kind of little C point shape that comes out 
and caves across. Then we've got all these fantastic caves, but you can see it's inside the 145 and 165 square here. And if you look, you can think, oh, there's that fold, that looks a bit complex. There's just an S shape. So there, and you can curve that down. I've just drawn an S. It's just really simply an S shape. And then you put a D inside, but it's got a kind of diagonal at the end. And that's your complex fold. Little diagonal going up. Now, this one comes down, kinks out, curves down, kinks out, and curves across the 185 line. Now it's cuff. Start with the back of the cuff, it's above, right in on the 185 line. Just curves over, but cuts through the 25 vertical point. And you see how that then goes right the way out comes down below the 205 line and then curves right under just above the 225 line. Then we've got this fantastic shadow shape that's just a kind of C shape there. Now I'm not pressing on hard because I'm going to keep that soft because it's that shadow. But then you've got the edge of the cuff that tracks inside and that's that C shape that we put in before. So that curves down to join right at the bottom. Now I'm just going to sharpen my pencil because we did all of that work which blunted it down quite a lot because we're going to do the hands. Now his left hand we've got the thumb and you can see it's kind of, it's in thirds. So you imagine that square from the 105 to the 125 in thirds. You can see that chunky thumb goes up that little bit there. You've got the edge of his hand, the crease comes up. And then we need that diagonal going up. It's just above the halfway point. So we just need to rub out a little bit of his waistcoat that came down a little bit too far. So that comes over and then curves down to the corner of his thumb. Now his fingers, we got the construction lines in, but you can see we'll start with the second finger because where it joins by the knuckles, the third finger, that's right on the 125, 245 line. So that's where that needs to be. And it comes across where his fingernail is right to the center line. So we just bring that line down and then we can just bring the finger line across. Little kind of rectangle shape for the nail at the end. Then the second finger comes across and then goes up. And those are his massive hands. End of his fingernail. Now the third finger and fourth finger, we can just bring the curve of that shadow down from the third finger that crosses the 125 line. And it's in line with the first two fingers, how it comes down just past the halfway line. And you've got the curve of the finger going back and then going up underneath the second finger. Little shape for the finger nail at the end. And then the little finger just crosses the 125 line. And then that curves up to join the cuff. Now I dropped my piece of paper so I was resting my left hand on top of my right hand rather than stop to pick it up. Then we've got this little toggle, got the circle at the bottom, and then that's we've got that shape at the top, it's just like a kind of big Y. And the edge of his waistcoat coming down and then the shade starting there. Now we've got 
this kind of f toggly bit that comes down. That's just three lines running kind of parallel with each other all the way down. Now we've got the top of the sheath for his knife and you can see it just curves around the handle, comes across the 45 line and over the 245 line. So you just see how it curves around there and you want to bring it back across kind of halfway between the 245 and 265 but we want this line just coming back across and you can see where that shadow is right on that side and then we've got the shadow coming all the way down to the hem of his jumper and then we've got the kind of probably snake skin sheath and that comes down just in a diagonal line and it starts to the left of the 45 and then crosses over to the right of the 45 and you can just wiggle that shape down and then we've got the hem of his jumper coming off on the side on that triangle that we put in and we can bring that up to underneath the hand now his right hand because we've got all of these other shapes in all your hard work is done people think drawing hands is very difficult but just as you see we've now got a full well nearly full I've just noticed I missed his right arm on that side we'll do that in a second and uh, but you just break everything down into simple shapes now his second finger is going to curve around and just look at it as shapes and his first finger we've got the line that goes up and then you've got a little kind of rectangle, little square, and then his thumb goes over his belt. And then the top of his thumb, you can see, is there, that's creating the shade. And then the line for the top of his finger comes all the way down. And then we just want the top of the sheath curving down, and you can put the end of his fingernail in. And then we can just indicate the shadow points trousers going down and there you've got a perfect hand shape now I did miss his left elbow so just following the curve up that goes through the center line of the 165 line and then just curve it up because fabrics slightly organic to where that joins now here Coming down to the 165 line, we've got this fantastic triangle of shade. And then we've got a D shape for the inner part of that crease. Then we just want to bring that curve around, curve that around, and the line above it, and the curve for the corner. And there we've got a complete outline down of Hagrid. So that's how simple it is just to get the outline down. Now we're going to rub out all of the grid lines. And as I said before, you don't have to put these grid lines on as dark as I do. I just do it so that you can actually see. Now I'm just using this large. Uh, Stettler Mars plastic rubber it's just one of my faves but I'm already noticing that because there's so many close lines I'm going to rub out all of my working out lines and I don't want to do that but I will rub out I'll use this for all around the edge but I won't obliterate everything I'll do all around Hagrid and then I kind of go to the edge but I do it fairly loosely so as it kind of looks arty and you can still see some of the line on the drawing 
just so as you know it's from this lesson so I'm just rubbing out broadly all of those lines and you can see there's lots of spent bits of eraser now I've got the same kind of rubber but in a pen which is very handy and it means I can come in in between all of these lines that I actually put on and get rid of the grid lines fairly efficiently without losing too much of my construction line drawing so you see you can get there you can get inside the fingers and you don't obliterate it and here in his cheek and over his forehead even down on his right hand cheek now you can get even smaller rubbers and I've got an electric one that's a bit smaller and that just that's just great because it just means it, that does the work for you in very tight detailed spaces so here at the bottom of his beard I can remove a lot of the grid lines and not actually lose the bottom of his beard again up on that shirt sleeve down on that cuff on his hand inside that finger even inside that belt there so even when you're thinking about an eraser it's a tool it's not to just be there to try and correct mistakes think of your eraser actually as a drawing tool because it's part of your arsenal of equipment for drawing now even here I can use the edge of that and there was a line right through his eyeball cleaned it up and made it really good now I then just sweep this off use an old big brush I used to use this years ago to varnish paintings BC before canisters before aerosol canisters I'm that old you used to varnish came in a glass jar and you painted it on and a lot of artists still do that but you can get varnish in aerosol cans and that that was fantastic because I only paint very thinly with my oil paint so an aerosol can was brilliant now I swept that onto a piece of paper so that uh, it didn't go all over the floor and again that's something you see I'm just noticing that I've missed a load of lines that I'd like to be removed and the top of his beard by his chin that's fantastic but I used to just sweep it on the floor which you then had to sweep up again whereas if you sweep it onto a piece of paper you then don't have to sweep it up twice but anyway there we have our complete outline of Hagrid drawn down now we can start filling them in just sharpening the pencil the trusty 2b pencil and now we are going to quickly fill in a load of tone on Hagrid and so you can see because the lights coming from this direction we are filling in the shadows down the left hand side of his face and then we've got a big highlight down the side of his nose so we can fill in all down the left hand side of his nose and then where that comes off from his cheek 
left hand side of his eye filling in the rest of his cheek down a little bit down the left hand side of his mouth and even just a bit on his lips little bit underneath his right eye on his right cheek center part of his forehead now that this is where the brightest point is right on the top of his forehead so we can go over to the edge up the right hand side top of his forehead Of the top of his right eye right in the corner we're just trying to put in quickly a general tone so I know I know that that's got to be darker that's going to go a lot darker just quickly putting a lot of tone onto his face and I'm just using the side of the 2B pencil and not moving it around again round the edge of his nostril and then right up the center of his nose just at the bottom third you got a bit more shade on the front and there's a highlight right on the tip of his nose Ooh. excuse me just knocked a bit of paper off now diagonally up the side of his nose into the corner and going over the eyebrow now because this is a smaller bodied portrait uh, you know we, we've got a full body on the paper like we did with uh, Lord Voldemort like we did with Sirius Black and Bellatrix Lestrange this is you, know, you, you can't put as much detail in the face because you've got less area to work with so it's getting the wholeness of the picture down now again his hands there's no real major highlight so I'm going to fill that in completely with an all over tone and then the same with the right hand and if you come in with a piece of kitchen towel you don't have to do this it's just something that I like doing I'm just smoothing that quickly it's always kicking off with a chainsaw again you can probably hear all the birds as well this is quite appropriate for Hagrid and I just gently smooth that first layer of tone down and then if you just come in with a putty rubber and you can just indicate where you want the highlights you got the one on his cheek underneath his eye edge of his nose underneath his right eye down his right cheek that center part on his forehead and he's just pulling it off and making it stand out
Anyway, we now need to do the same down on his thumb, top of his thumb, top of his finger, top of the third finger, and the first finger, and just the top of the hand there, and the same on the right hand. Now, we're going to fill in quite quickly using the side of the pencil a lot of his beard and you can see here we've got this darker shadow coming off on the bottom part by his chin you've got a darker amount coming out underneath his nose I'm just wiggling it very gently backwards and forwards. Now I'm using the kind of sharper point just indicating those whiskers. And then coming down off the side of his uh, moustache and the side top of his beard on his chin then if we come up to the side of his face we've got this shadow coming down in the midst of his hair and then again up at the top Now, we've got the real dark shadow. Again, I'm just using the 2B pencil on the side of his face. And then that comes down to where his moustache is. And that gives us a much stronger definition and you can see Hagrid literally staring out at you now and then if we do this you can see going up into his hair there's a highlight right on the top so we can fill this highlight in the edge of the highlight and just detail that down and I'm using the edge of the pencil just to fill that shadow in right I've shut my window because it was getting very noisy <laughs> and a neighbor's out there doing his Hagrid impression with hedge cutters or a chainsaw or something so anyway I've shut the window so the birds may have uh, again I don't know exactly how much you can hear in the background but we'll try and limit it anyway so back at it with a piece of paper to rest my hand on and so we're doing these shadows for the hair again I'm just squiggling and you can see we've got this like lovely highlight coming down these highlighted bits of hair so I'm just indicating where they are going to be now I'm going to leave as much paper as I possibly can to let these stand out. And you draw the shadow around. Now again, Balatrix Lestrange with a big frizzy hair was uh, slightly fantastic. Now...
just bringing all of that hair down and here we have some more shadow right in the dark and underneath the hair we can come back to this bit on the top where you've got the highlight so now I'm following the curve in the shape you've got a highlight right on the front and there's a shadow right underneath at the bottom so we've got this V And that's the dark at the bottom. <sighs> and then we can just use the tip of the pencil to get the effect of the hair going back so imagine he's pushed it back with his fingers follow it with your pencil and that's how easy it is and you can go into the highlighted bit with a few little lighter ones and then again just following the direction of the hair And that's how you draw hair you you draw it in the direction that you want it to go and that's why that's how you make it look natural now again i'm just doing this as a quick video if you want photo realistic you've got to spend days just on the hair so that's hair on the top quickly in now coming down over his shoulder again just lots of squiggles very quickly just to indicate this massive beard And again we've got this is quite a highlighted area that's going to be but I'm just filling this in for now quite quickly and then we can work on some of the detail afterwards just so as we've got a good I mean there already you can see you've got a good coverage we just got it work just want to get a good indication that there's a lot already down on Hagrid and we want to get the rest of his body down you know we've only got because it's just his head a third of the third to a quarter of the area covered so just sharpening my pencil again now we've got the sleeve on his top so I'm using the flat side of the pencil and filling this in really quickly kind of darker areas that shadow area underneath there then you've got the shadow area of that fold shadow area in this triangle just comes down a little bit more and the edge and the top's kind of highlighted so I'm just very gently 
putting a light tone coming all the way down the cuff. Before we put this slightly darker tone for the shade under his left forearm. The shade next to that fold in that V. So we can fill that in quite quickly, this pouch type pocket. And we can indicate some of the darker areas. Now that's a lot of the left hand sleeve in and done. So now we've got, well before I do the waistcoat I'm going to, just because I've got the flat of the pencil, I'm going to do the tone all across his top. There we go, there's a little bit sitting right where my pencil was about to go. So I'm going to fill all of this stomach in really quickly. And then we've got more tone on this side where the shadow is casting it round over the top of the belt buckle. Then we want shadow caused by his beard coming across the top. Then we've got the right hand sleeve. So I'm just coming down putting the lighter tone in. And then the same as it comes underneath his belt. Right to the edge. Again, I'm just quickly smoothing that out. Again, just very quickly using a little bit of kitchen roll. Now, I'm going to use the older putty rubber because it's filthy. You can see this one's newer, it's cleaner. Just because it won't pull off as much pencil. It just gives me a softer kind of touch. And you can just see I've just pulled on and indicated a number of the highlights. Now, if I do this already on this side, before we put the shadows in, I can just indicate a few of the highlights. It just different way of doing it. You don't have to do it the same way all the time. So now we've got the shadow in this S that we drew. A little bit in the D. And going up and above. Shadow underneath that crease where his elbow is. triangle of shadow by the cuff, that crease comes across, and then shadow right in the corner of the cuff, and above his hand where the cuff curves around. And 
and the arm going up. Now, just some little shadow bits down on his tunic. So we come out underneath the belt buckle, coming down from the finger. That's going to be very dark, but I can just indicate that. Then we've got a kind of fold line there. And this is going to get very dark coming down underneath that hand. And now you can see Hagrid really started to come together. Now, a little bit of shade on this cuff. It's going to be very dark in there. actually really lovely. Now we need to fill in this waistcoat. So again I'm still using the side of the pencil just to fill in a lot of tone very quickly. indicating where the creases are. And we've got this patch up on that top of the sleeve. Again, down here is going to be all dark. down by this little toggle then we've got the sheath for his knife coming down indicating the dark and the dark underneath the sheath of the the knife handle the edge it's even things like the belt. So I'm just filling these in. Now again it's going to lighten out as it curves over here. But then we've got a nice dark right inside and shadow right up in this corner you've got these leather straps coming over the belt and then we fill the belt in it's got darker tone towards the edge and it's thinner where it's obviously been pulled through and it's got the same coming around here so now we can just quickly indicate some darker shadow on the hand the tops of the fingers and then that bit of trouser leg and the sheath of the knife coming down And now we've got a good layer of tone down all the way across Hagrid that we can now build up and just build some more detail and dark on it, uh, taking us towards a completed drawing. Just sharpened my pencil again and I did notice that I hadn't actually filled this bit in. So again, just quickly filling in that 
that right hand side of his waistcoat so we've got a bit of shade going up there that goes up underneath his beard and that is all of the shadow in now we're going to need my papers to rest my hand on so that we can now concentrate on his face a little bit more so we've got a shade on and around his eyes down the side of his face now he's quite a rugged character so he's got these crease lines now it's very dark right into that corner and then where his eyelid curves around underneath can bring that right across the top and you've got the fold of skin right into the corner and his pupil and that highlight just being left and then the edge of his eye you've got a little bit of skin just curving down where his tear duct is. Um, we can bring down a little kind of triangle of shadow there. But then his nose, we've got a nice dark shadow, and then just soften it off where it then comes down above his moustache onto his cheek. then under the right of his eye or on the, the very right hand side of the paper on his left eye we've got that shadow through all of the creases then coming down his cheek And across his cheek, he's kind of red, rosy cheeks. You just build that shadow up a little bit more to leave this highlight here on the edge of his cheek and then underneath his eye. Now, his bushy eyebrows, we can build them up a bit the shadow just underneath then coming across his forehead to the central part just a little bit backwards and forwards just very gently you can just increase the tone across there leaving that highlighted part here Can see now already Hagrid's face is really starting to look out at us very very well again come down to his nose you've got the curve over the side of his nostril coming right down to the front there's a bit more shadow in there and then that kind of curves around the side and you've got this <laughs> strong diagonal shadow going up and a little bit coming across the center and you just want to gr graduate out the shadow a little bit over the front of his nose but leave this highlight right on the front so I'm bringing a little bit of tone right the way down but leaving the highlight 
just filling that top part of his nose in but leaving the highlight down the side and then coming up in the center of his forehead it's like a T there so you've got the, the middle part of a T there and then the crossbar coming over kind of creases on his forehead and just a little bit of tone coming down above his eyebrow just wiggle it down quite nicely and his right eyebrow you got the shade right in the corner his right eye we've got this lovely shadow right in the right hand side of the eye going off to the corner of his eye socket but just be gentle because it's just on that bit that comes down then folds above the lower bag of his eye increase the darkness on the crease underneath his eye and then we've got again his rosy ruddy cheeks now his lip left hand side of his lip highlight on the right hand side but the lower lip Again, same thing, slightly darker on the left hand side. Increase the shadow going underneath his beard. And right underneath his nose. Underneath the right nostril. We've got that darker shadow. Before it comes out into this lighter part. On the top. I'm just increasing the definition on the lines on the side of his face and then we've got that shadow at the side of his forehead and there I mean that that's fantastic you know, all of a sudden Hagrid is staring out at us and it's just a question of building up your tonal values slowly Again, the hair right on the front, increasing the shadows underneath at the bottom. Then we've got this dark shadow, this little triangle by the right hand side of his mouth. Again, just keep looking at the reference. This is how you dance around a picture. Filling in that tone there. His beard comes out. And it's darker. I'm twisting the pencil so I've got the sharper point. I'm just putting little squiggles in. Just to fill in this darker area to give the impression of this very scraggly beard. And there, that's really coming together for us. And so now, oops, just twisting the pencil. It's getting a bit, it, it fell through my hand. So I'm now just holding it underneath. Just filling in these darker areas quickly still trying to leave those highlighted strands of hair coming down then going to the back it's the back isn't highlighted like it is on the top so now I'm going to come in with the old putty rubber and just pinch it and just try and get 
some highlighted bits showing through again. And the same with these bits right at the top. Got that V there. And where the highlight right on the very top comes in. And just adding a lot of the squiggles in. Just building it up little by little. I got this darker little patch right next to his right eye, then coming down. And I'm just using the side of the pencil just to fill in in between these squiggles now. But still literally just squiggling the pencil up and down in the direction of his hair. So there you can see we've got that beard and there's enough paper showing through to give us those kind of highlighted bits that we still want. just bringing that shadow over into the highlighted part and there you can see so much more three-dimensionality in Hagrid again this is still just using a 2b pencil so now I'm going to come in with a 4b I'm going to increase the dark in Hagrid's eyes, right in the centre where the pupil is, and above that highlight, and the shadow right under his left nostril, and then using the side of the 4B pencil. tip just shattered off I can bring that dark down into this beard again just squiggling quickly and it intensifies that area as much as we need it to Then coming up the hair to the back and here we've got this fantastic sea of dark. Right up in the corner of his forehead. And that's giving us the three dimensionality that we actually want. And you can see that's really giving us lovely form just by increasing the darkness, the tonal value just going darker. So again, just twisting the pencil, getting the sharper tip you can see we've still got the kind of highlights that we wanted but you can just come in and just pull out just dab with the putty rubber and you'll get more highlights 
highlights then you can just go back in with the pencil and it's just working backwards and forwards like that just softening that shadow off a bit and that's how you build and increase your detail in the hair it really is that simple and just by using a 4b pencil you can get better darks faster and again the same with a 6b or an 8b but I'm just going for an impression so I've really just covered that area now but I want some of these like highlighted lines back in and where I haven't pressed on as much it's easier to just get some of the pencil back off and that allows me that kind of wispy highlighted grey hair that Hagrid's got and you just do this until you're happy that's literally all that you can do so just sharpening both 2B pencils that won't fit in anymore so I'll just use that and then that one's done until I can't use this anymore Just giving some definition to the hair that's going up into the highlight on the top. Some wispy straggles. And then these curves coming off. Some just little definition lines coming off his moustache. Again, if you squint, you can see like this, this tonal shadow. So he needs a bit more dark just coming down there to those edges. And now I'm just dabbing on the more highlighted part using the putty rubber. Just putting some of the diagonal lines for the highlights on and this is the fun this is just so much fun because I really love this impressionistic looser kind of way of drawing whereas if you were doing this you know if you look at my portraits time lapses drawings that have taken me a few days to do you have to spend a long amount of time and there's no other way around it so again just coming back in with the 2b pencil a little bit more shade on the side of his nose going up to that inside bit and just like the hair you do this until you go yep yeah, I'm happy with that a bit more shade on his eyebrow down the front of his head now I'm going to use the clean putty rubber got this highlight on the creases on the side of his left eye and then there are two highlighted lines under the bag of his left eye and a little bit on the lower eyelid 
top eyelid going into the corner just underneath his eyebrow that's very bright a little bit there the corner of this crease coming up from the top of his left eye and his nose and we got that highlight right on the edge of his nose and below his lip lower lip highlight on his lips and the bottom of his moustache and the same highlight on his right eye just dabbing that highlight on the front and there you can see Hagrid looking really fantastic we just need a little bit more highlight on that left eye then we can put the second crease back in and that's really lovely a little bit of shade in the corner of his right eye just that little bit across the forehead So now we're going to use the 4B pencil and fill in large areas of the dark that we need around Hagrid. So again if you just kind of squint your eyes you'll see where you need to fill in vast shapes of dark. Now I'm my hand's not resting on anything. I'm pivoting from my shoulder because these are quite loose shapes. It's, I am doing quite a loose drawing. And because Hagrid being rough, it's great to actually do this as a very loose and impressionistic drawing. So up by his top shoulder, we've got this patch. We can bring that shadow down take that shadow into that area there top of the shoulder needs to be fully dark again just kind of squiggle it loosely into the mass of hair where the shade from his waistcoat joins bottom of that patch edge coming down to his hand so just going to sharpen this and I can fill in oh dear the tips just snap off you have to be careful because it's soft when you're pressing on after you've just sharpened your pencil it can just pling the bits off like that just happened so off to the right uh, I will have to get the suck them all up off the floor get the vacuum in at some point but they just pling off everywhere So now we've got, I'm using the soft, I'm not pressing on as hard to get a soft line because I want this uh, hard edge. I just want that softer shadow in that fold. Again, coming down off this one. 
And if I was doing a very, very detailed drawing, taking my time, I'd be using things like an 8B pencil. But I'm just going for this very loose impressionistic drawing. A bit like we did with the sorting hat. So now we've got this dark crease in the top of his shoulder. Yeah, the sorting hat was a good one to do. Now I'm pressing on fairly hard just to get this good darker tone coming across the front there and the same with inside that patch. there on the front of his waistcoat but already you can see it's giving us much more solidity in Hagrid's form now we've got this set of pouches and pockets down on the edge of his left arm shadow right underneath that flap then you got these folds again I'm using the side of the pencil to just fill in the tone very quickly softening off that shadow and then where this comes around the edge and the cough And you just keep looking at your reference and looking where you want to just add a little bit more tone and just build it up slowly. Now these are very rounded. So I'm just rounding the tops. This fabric doesn't have like straight lines and hard edges. And then we've got darker tone at the bottom of his cuff but we've got kind of three banding lines we've got the central one there another one going there just bring some of the tone over the top of the cuff and then carefully because we buy the hand I'm now coming around the edge of the fingers to put in that dark shadow and then we've got the little toggle shadow caused by that going down onto his waistcoat and we've got the dark coming right off to this side again I'm just keeping it kind of soft and fuzzy I'm not doing a solid line at the bottom of the cuff and on this now we can just simply fill it all in because that's really deep dark shadow and if you want it absolutely flat, you just got to use a, an 8B, go over it lots. But you can see already we've got that lovely quality of just shape and form being created by the black. And there, just building up some more of that tone 
guns we come across here we've got in between the fingers so I'm just indicating that shadow coming down to this edge of the fabric here and then we've got the darker tone mid-tone of his waistcoat around the pendant toggle bit and then this patchy shadow coming down underneath the two fingers of his left hand then we've got the darker shadow on his fingers underneath his belt I'm just going to sharpen the pencil again Just, I was running it was getting very very low and that then allows me to with a sharper tip I can get the dark in in it much more controlled way so now bringing this shadow down to the bottom bottom of his top and the shadow right at the bottom of his tunic coming over to the shadow again it's soft where it goes onto the tunic but going up the side of the knife and inside just inside that soft edge you can have a harder point Again, the same soft here where the edge of the shadow from the top of the sheath of his knife goes onto the fabric. Got the dark coming round the top. And that little dark patch at the bottom of his leg. Now, got this shadow on his right waistcoat that comes right down to the cuff in the corner. Then there's that triangle of dark shadow. Just soften it off. And the dark inside the cuff above his right hand. Again, soft and gentle as you see it curving over the top of his hand. Because you we haven't got that hard edge. Just carefully filling it in. Darker shadow in that crease. And now I'm just bringing down some directional lines on his waistcoat. I've got the shadow underneath that button. Same there, filling that button in, got a much darker shape for the button on his top. And then the one that's totally in the open, just indicate four little centre points. And then you've got the shape of that button there. Again, the belt where it joins his hand and the leather wrap strap that goes around we can indicate the dark right inside 
but then don't do it you can go black all the way but if you just leave a little highlighted bit you, you can barely see there but i haven't filled it in as dark as i am doing now actually on the belt and it it just resonates in the drawing you your mind fills in even though you can't you know you're looking at that and you think oh that's all black together but it isn't i've just filled in and there's a nice little highlighted bit top of the belt shadow where it's the fold is going underneath that wrap around leather bit again at the top you're just looking and you're seeing yep there's a shadow underneath there that's dark right underneath where the metal of the clasp belt buckle joins the leather and then we can bring some of the kind of patterning on the leather you want a little bit of a highlight around the holes just squiggling and filling that in then we've got the dark on this side going up into his hand dark in that loop and then you can see here we've got the shadow off the handle of the knife going over the belt and the bottom part of his top Just building the tone up, just putting some cross hatching on quickly. And the edge of the handle of the knife. And right underneath is dark shadow. And I've missed off. You see here we've got a bit of his waistcoat. There's a just a little V shape there. And we can just fill that in quickly. That dark line coming down. Just indicate some darker shaped shadows in the folds on there. And we can just dab a little bit off. And we've got a little dark bit squiggling up there. Some more dark on the clasp. And here now we've got a really good kind of second layer of mid-tone going all over our drawing. Sharpen up the point that comes through. Again, right on the top of the clasp. Just filling some of the tone in quickly there. And again, where the hair comes over the top of his waistcoat now. Because we've put so much pencil down, we can just indicate some highlights on the hair. And there's Hagrid looking really good. Like I say, we're getting there and we've just got to build up some more details. We've got the hands to do and more details in the jacket and the arms, but these will be quick and, and enjoyable. Like I say, you want to do photographic, you've got to spend more time on it. But that's looking quite good so far and we'll enjoy carrying on. Now, coming back in, onto 
his waistcoat we're going to add in a lot of these details so we've got the stitching going around the outside so I've just with the 4b pencil put that shadow in which would be underneath each of the pieces uh, each of the stitches and then you just get your putty rubber knead it pull the edge and then just above each one you just pull off a little bit of the pencil and that's just how you indicate the the stitching very quickly again up at the top we've got that little bit up there then you can just go back in go over the top and just fill in the shade in between each of the stitches and the same coming down the edge and you've got the stitching on this patch up on the corner now actually on his waistcoat we've got this kind of checkerboard pattern and I'm gonna put that in so I'm just indicating some texture and shape in this patch up on the top right hand corner of his waistcoat but then we've got this you can see there's this pattern that follows the form of his waistcoat so I'm just drawing lines down in the light part and then and I'm using the kind of flatter part of the pencil And that leaves enough of a highlight it gives you that nice little check effect that's on his jacket on his waistcoat jacket so again these two lighter parts here and you can see how the fold so that way it's going from kind of diagonally that way and then he just moves around and you can see you just follow the shape with your lines and because you put all that dark on you're actually going into the darkened areas and you can see already that that gives it that little bit extra more texture and it's just a very very quick way now again you, you can go in and highlight them if you want to you, know, you can go in with a putty rubber and just dab some little highlights in on the front part I'm, I'm literally just dabbing I'm not being very particular or specific and again that just lifts the the jacket that little bit just giving it a, a little bit extra more texture now again you've got much darker shadows right here 
So I'm using the side of the pencil. I'm being careful not to tilt it up so I don't snap the point off. But I'm just pressing on to get and then softening off as you get to the lighter bits. And then a shadow right on this side, going under the hair. And you can soften the edge. And there, very quickly, you've got a lot of really good detail. So again, on this side now, not pressing on as it like this side was very dark, whereas this side isn't as dark because it's in the light, the light's coming from this direction. But you still want that nice dotted pattern on Hagrid's jacket. So using the flattened part of the pencil on the tip I can come all the way down and indicate some horizontal lines and then that bit above that patch goes a slight different direction. Then you can do the vertical ones coming down and then again just dabbing very quickly increase the shadow coming off from the hair then we've got on the side of the patch the button the second button just want a bit of highlight on the buttons and then we've got that soft edge on the shadow just coming down over his jacket and then dark in that crease Coming up, then we've got the crease right in the corner. Ooh. Then, as we come down the forearm, got that shadow triangle of dark right in the corner. Then you've got these little creases with little bits of shade and shadow around and that just gives the shape to the forearm as it comes down so I've gone right over the creases so you just use your putty rubber and put the highlight back in so now the cuff coming down to his right hand and there's just like we put the, the lines in on his waistcoat his cuff have got lines that go all the way around and I'm just lightly putting them in and that goes all the way down and at the back there's a bit of a shade and then the same coming down the centre where that comes out at the front and then right at the back you've got a highlight and then at the front and if you really pinch it, you can just increase the highlight in the ribbing going back. And that gives us the texture that we want. 
So now coming over and doing his left arm, I'm just filling in. It's quite a mottled texture and to replicate that in pencil would take hours and hours and hours. So I'm just doing some simple cross hatching. Just to fill in the tone and a bit of the texture. So we've got that dark in that crease there. Crease, little crease going there. Soften that off. Then down on the pouch type pockets, we've got a number of kind of ribbing sewn parts like the edges. So you can just double those up. And that gives the extra detail. Again, on the edges of the ribbon, you can just pull off some highlights. And it helps give a little bit of definition and detail in that dark area. Coming down the front of the sleeve, got this dark shadow. But you can see here we've got a nice double line that gives us a, a little defining point on the front of his arm. curve goes around. So again we've got the highlights now. We're filling in, just cross hatching with some tone coming all the way down. Not doing the cuff just yet. I'm just squiggling to keep looking at the reference just squiggling just adding little bits of tone all the way that shadow that crease goes right up at the back and a secondary shadow with highlight point and that crease just comes down into that fold underneath now just pull the tip of the dark and putty rubber and I'm just dabbing now and that's pulling off enough highlight but I'm just dabbing the point because of this the kind of fuzzy nature of this actual top that Hagrid is wearing so again you've got these darker highlights and darker these brighter highlights surrounded by these darker areas coming down the cuff and now you can see we've now got some really lovely form and shape created by all of that tone that we've put in So again now we've got this cuff using the not pressing on as hard but a softened part of the 4B pencil we can draw those ribbed lines in all the way down and across the cuff.
and when it comes to the bottom it gets darker so you can just twist the pencil go back over your lines and then right by the edge of the cuff it's darker all the way up you've got a band of dark and then again coming in into the middle same thing and then we've got this great lovely dark line where the cuff meets the, the sleeve and again at the bottom just darkening as it goes up and you can see there now we've got that lovely tonal texture just created by putting a few simple lines on now right on the front we've got a strong highlight and then just pulling the putty rubber to a fine point just in between just indicate some highlights in between the lines that you've drawn and that helps to pull that off again down here we've got this darker shadow underneath the hand we've got the cross texture coming down to this little pendant on his waistcoat coming down so again I'm just using the very blunted tip of the 4B pencil to create that pattern and then just really darkening everything down around it and so here where the shadow comes up onto his arm I've just completely obliterated it so there's no there's no actual defining line there at all and then again these bits underneath his finger on the front down his tunic his shadow caused by the top of the knife sheath and again the, the texture of the actual sheath itself is a very squiggly so you can just literally just I mean you see I'm just putting squiggles on and soften it down this edge just putting some softer tone on because it's that little bit darker and then right at the top you've got a highlight there and then one that comes around the corner and highlight right on the edge <laughs> tops of the leather bits going over the hand and now again this bit of his tunic his waistcoat going off behind just putting the patterning on Now Hagrid's looking really fantastic. I've just sharpened the 4B, but I'm going to come back in with the 2B pencil. And now we've got his right hand, right hand, his left hand, sorry. And I'm going to use the side of the 2B pencil and we've got that shadow coming down to that knuckle then the second knuckle comes across and joins and then the third knuckle above the third finger and we want that darker shadow going down I'm 
Now, coming down the third finger, got the shadow underneath. And it just gets thinner because of the highlight on the top. Shadow on the little finger. Coming down to the tip. And the corner of the thumb, we've got a little bit of shadow as it goes, tucks in behind the belt. Just gently doing some cross hatching across all the fingers, all the way down. So now coming back in with the 4B pencil and we want this dark shadow coming off underneath the third finger and then softening the edge of between the second and third fingers and then the first and second. And just keep looking at the reference and you just need to build your tone up appropriately. Now I'm using the 4B just to build these shadows up. Coming down, making them richer and a little bit darker. We got fourth knuckle. Where the cuff comes over the hand. That's just darkening that a bit more. There you can see straight away we've got much better form on that hand. You know, it was a little bit light sticking out. Just back to the 2B pencil. Then just building that shade up little by little. Remember, I always say it's easier to add tone than it is to take it away. Now we can just add a little bit more. So there's a stronger highlight on this finger than there is on, on the third finger than there is on the second. Curve the hand coming up. Now just coming back in, just dabbing gently, I'm using the old dirty of putty rubber so it doesn't pull off too much. Dabbing the third finger, the little finger, those little bits above the knuckles and going up the hand onto the top. So now we need to do the same on the right hand. I'm just carefully filling the tone in. But we need more coming out of this shadow. So I'm just softly, and using the 2B pencil, just softly fuzzing that edge a little bit, just circling slowly, just backwards and forwards. Again, you could use a smudging stick, a cotton board. But I've done all of this with only using the kitchen towel. Got the dark there in the crease in the corner of his hand where the thumb is. Then you've got the finger. There's the thing, I quite like this. You know, the very rugged effect of the drawing. bit of dark underneath the finger there. Don't 
dark right underneath the first finger and second finger. I'm just using the edge of the pencil, being very careful. And you've got some lines where the joints in the fingers are going up to the knuckles. Again, just coming in with the putty rubber now. I can just bring back the highlights coming down the fingers, the edge of the second finger, top of the hand, and then the thumb going underneath his jumper and into his belt. Those creases back in. Now again, the shape of the handle. Yeah, I'm just looking around, just seeing what I need to do. This is the 2B pencil. So now we're on to his tunic, his jumper. I'm using the soft flat of the pencil. And again, you've got the shape and form. You can kind of see lines that are coming down. So you can quickly you know, follow the shape of his tummy as it comes out and then comes over. Just like we did very darkly on the uh, waistcoat. You can do a similar kind of thing on his actual jumper as well. Now, it's very bitty, so you could kind of do this pointillist thing very, very slowly all over. But I'm just trying to go and get this impression down really quickly. So by putting these lines on following the actual form and shape of Hagrid's body. You create the illusion, so, of the actual form that you want. And it helps convince people that they're seeing what they are actually seeing, even though you've basically just smudged a bit of pencil around a page. It's kind of muggle magic drawing, guess. I'll have to remember that one and just call it muggle magic. So here where the beard comes out, we've got darker shadow here. I'm just bringing those lines down a little bit. And then it gets, it's still shadowed caused by his beard. It gets lighter as it comes around. There already, you know, you can see we've got this lovely tone and shape created just by bringing these lines on. Again, because this is a very kind of hessian fabric and we don't want just these lines showing, it's where you just come back in and use a little bit of kitchen roll. And if you smooth that down, I mean, you can even circle it a little bit. You'll, you'll obliterate a number of the lines. They'll soften off. So there you can see you've just got that general tone, but the lines that you put in give you that illusion of where you want the direction of the form and shape to actually go. So again, now we've got... I'm being careful next to the hand. We've got a darker shadow right next to the hand that then goes up but you, you can see there there's a reflected highlight so we want the dark right next to the thumb and soften it off and then you come up and you fill the tone in try not to go over the thumb like I did just
and then you just make it that little bit darker above. And you can see there, that's where we've got our reflected highlight. If I really put a defining line next to the thumb, that helps. And then come in very carefully with the dirty putty rubber. And I can bring out the highlight on the thumb again. Now, we've got darker shape and tone. Now rather than going that way, just like with hair, because of the lines in his top, I'm going, I'm following the line and shape of his actual top to build up the tone of the shadow as it follows around his stomach. By the edge of his waistcoat and coming down where the buttons are again it's very sh dark underneath the beard so that comes down and we've got that shape coming around and there you can see we're getting that fuller picture now because we're just bringing the tones together by filling in the form on Hagrid's tummy again you can just I'm just putting a few on and you can see it's just looking that kind of and you can hear I'm just dabbing but I'm, I'm looking and I'm just literally dabbing little flecks on kind of pointless little touches using the side of the pencil and it makes it look like that old bitty jumper now here we've got the fold of the fabric going over so we can just indicate I'm just using the sharper point of the pencil and that gives us the the definition that we need on that little section and we need a highlight on there as well Now I'm just literally just flecking all these little bits. I'm resting my left hand on top of my right hand so that I can just add these flecks. I'm literally just pivoting up and down. It just means I can get lots of nice little marks on very quickly. Again, you're going for an impression if you're doing it quickly like this. And you just want to imagine that you're seeing a very bitty jumper. So again, now I'm just balancing on my little finger off the page. It's kind of pogo and it's helping me finger to pogo. Now I'm doing the same, coming up the left arm, just so that we've got a cohesive set of marks and textures. So now, up by this button, we've got a little highlight there around the top of the button, now that comes down. 
and again coming around the front of his tummy I'm just dabbing to pull off some pencil and you can see it's got that nice kind of fabricy fluffy texture rather than a solid rubbing out and again it's just using your drawing tools to create all the effects and textures that you actually want and you've got to convince people that they are seeing exactly what you want them to see and there we have Hagrid looking rather splendid so now the leather I'm just coming in with the kitchen roll I'm just smudging that a little bit adding some dark at the top and the dark behind the handle and then the buckle this is the 2B pencil so we've got the sharp point creating the groove line that's towards the edge that goes up comes over we need to finish that dark off again the same just using the side just fill in that dark quicker but so you've still got that leathery texture the sheen that's on it and the from the wear and tear dark right in that corner and you can see there we've got that lovely highlight on the belt I'm just toning it down a little bit And then you can just come back in with the putty rubber you've got the strongest highlight right on the corner so I'm going to use the clean putty rubber because that pulls off more in that corner and then the top of the belt and these now these are last details a bit more dark around the button here and a bit more tone inside the button and then this just increase the shadow a little bit on the side there I'm just squinting my eyes need the 4B pencil just because this is much darker and it's easier to do it with the 4B pencil so I'm bringing this dark across right up to underneath the belt buckle down the side and then just as we did on the top again just dappling to bring out that fabricy kind of highlighted texture and the same down there on the edge
No, it really is. You just... Literally just fiddle a little bit. Until you're happy and content. Shadow just coming under the belt. Again, this is, this is the joy of drawing. This is where, you know, we, we're at the end point and Hagrid is looking fantastic. Let's just increase his smile that little bit. And now, literally just got that fantastic dark bit of hair coming off there I just got some wispy hairs so I'm using the light point of the pencil and then feathering the hair in over that jacket his waistcoat side And that, I'm really, really pleased with that. I hope you've had fun. There's Hagrid. All we need to do now is actually put on Hagrid. And then I'll sign it on this side. Billy 2020. And there we have another completed drawing. Again, you can spend as much time detailing up as much as you want in a piece of art say i've had an absolute blast drawing this and it's just a joy to share with you these simple techniques so anyway thank you very very much do enjoy your drawing i'll see you in the next video like and subscribe and share with your friends well that's fantastic take care ta-da